I'm John P. We are wrapping up another week of Talk Mobile 2013. Well, you know, so the bandwidth um, is what really enabled the cloud to exist, right? We've talked about that this week, um, but it's still a little slow getting on to the cloud. So is, is that going to get better? What's the future there? Higher, faster, harder, more reliable, better backups, smarter backups, I think. What do you mean by smarter backups? What do you see in the in the, your future cloud? We can do it. We can visualize it in our head. We know how it works. We have multiple backups, backups of backups. My mom does not. Damn how how not. do we make that smarter? I'd rather how do we make that <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's a messy space. If you think about all our right. other major services of the past decade, you know, something like one company always seems to come in and reinvent it. Like yeah. even web, think about web search. You had web crawler and AltaVista yeah. and Lycos, and then Google comes along and now the next decade plus is taken care of for us by them and we put our faith in them and they've expanded beyond what they were good at and they are in these cloud services. But in terms of storage and backup, we have all these players fighting yep. it out. You know, um, We're not at the future of these things yet. Dropbox is fantastic, but it is an old fashioned hierarchical file system that my mother just finds unapproachable. Where's my file? I don't know where it is. That's what it. I mean by smart. So mm -hmm. iCloud, for example, iCloud is fantastic because you never have to worry about where something goes, but it's bound to apps. If I put an if I put a file in Elements, I can't open it in another app. And then if I delete Elements, I can never get that file back. There's just no one who's doing it incredibly well, but doing it in the way that I want file systems to be in the future. Well, okay. So one of the problems then is that the storage is disjointed from the usage. Yeah. So we've got things happening on our desktops and then we've got things stored in the cloud mm -hmm. and we've got a weak bandwidth link in between. So why not put everything in the cloud? I mean, thin client. Let's talk about moving our processing into the cloud beside the storage where when we access it, we're just essentially pulling down a remote monitor of what's going on up there. Why don't we do that? I think hybrid systems are still the best where you, you put certain things as backup. Like mm -hmm. right now, Xbox can do backups of your games to SkyDrive, which is pretty cool. It doesn't do that on Windows Phone yet, but obviously that's going to happen. And it's probably even more important for your phone because if you buy a new one, you want all your saved games, you know, you only need some way to back that up. And so that's going to be, I think, a big area. But yeah, it needs to be smart. And by smart, I mean you don't think about it. You Games get backed up. Right? We try, I mean, iCloud tried. You can do key value store, works great. Documents in the cloud works okay. Core data store, it's a disaster, and the thing is it's not easy. If you have, for example, I'm using my tablet, it's offline, I go online, what happens? I log out of my account, my girlfriend logs into her account. It, it's, it's such a moving target, it's impossible to know where to sync it or how. When will we have ubiquity? When will we have the, uh, the ability to have our data everywhere that we want it? Well, and I mean, one thing we didn't talk about was LastPass. I mean, this is a great cloud storage system, but it's specifically for password. But now browsers themselves are becoming cloud-based systems. Mm -hmm. where Chrome's Chrome done that for some time. Internet Explorer. And isn't it ironic that yeah. Internet Explorer, where everyone castigated it for trying to be a proprietary <laughs> cloud, and now Chrome does things that no one else does, Safari does things that no one else does. We're refragmenting the web. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is not so much if, but when can all of this cloud-based stuff completely throw Hollywood out wait, I and mean, get wait, rid of it? Wait, wait, wait. We have no more movie stars? Uh, yeah, maybe Is that not. what you mean? You'd be the movie no, star, Netflix. Cal. You'd be the YouTube <laughs> yeah. movie star. Netflix is hiring big-name movie stars to star in their online-only yep. streaming productions. Why not do that with everything? It's only going to take one, I think. One, one studio to do things the right way, the way we want it before the others start to fall in line. And, and yeah. they have to show that they can make money doing it. Yeah. Yeah, the but, Hollywood version of EMI. Yeah, Hollywood's an establishment, thing. though. It's not that easy to overthrow an doesn't establishment. Well, we switched to digital it. projection, digital movie making, and that's that was a big change in the last three years. What would happen if the next Star Wars movie that was released, huh. rather mm. than being released into theaters, was released first direct online, Pay five bucks to stream it it's actually, direct. It's actually starting to happen. Uh, Xbox Video does this for some movies, but there tend to be smaller budget movies right. that, that we don't hear as much. But, but it has to, in order for it to work, in order for it to make a change, is, it has to be a big There is a $35,000 system you can put in your house and <laughs> verify one person with an IRS scan to pay $500 to watch a first-run right. movie on your home theater. That's true. That's the state of the yeah. art of our theater right now. 
<laughs> all right, you guys, let us know what you think the future of all of this will be and what you want to see that maybe we haven't talked about here. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. See you later.